Hey there, Jen Johnson from DieselCrew.com and FixingElbowPain.net. If you're a kettlebell lifter and you're suffering from high forearm and elbow pain, then you definitely want to watch this video. I'm going to show you three common errors that take place in kettlebell training that will beat these areas up and I'm going to show you how to fix them. The first common error is a technique error on the press. Specifically, when holding the kettlebell in the rack, people have a tendency to let the wrist sag back. What this does, it keeps the extensor muscles and the other muscles on the back of the forearm relax and it creates no padding for the kettlebell. So instead, what you want to do, make sure that wrist stays straight and you'll have a much better foundation for your press. You'll see a lot of beginners when they come back with the swing, they keep their hand fully pronated like this. And what you actually want to do as the bell comes through, you should allow the hand to turn over even further beyond pronation. So this is what it looks like. This is proper. Notice how it turns over. If you do it incorrectly, you'll stay just in pronation. The problem is that loads tension up on the flexor muscles, especially the common attachment point here, and that can lead to things like golfer's elbow and other types of pain that really takes a while to get rid of. So make sure when you're swinging, allow the hand to fully turn over and you'll be in a lot better shape down the line. Now if you're really getting serious with kettlebells, you're probably performing snatches. And this is one that can really take a toll on the forearm and elbows if you're not careful. Now the problem with this is how you receive the kettlebell. If you're feeling that the kettlebell is looping over top of your hand and then smashing on the back of the elbow, then there's a slight technique adjustment that you can do to make things better here. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. At the top, a lot of people will allow the kettlebell to turn in their hand, all right? So the handle will actually swivel in their hand. And when that happens, you have a great deal of mass under a lot of speed that is rotating and then it crashes on top of your, your wrist, your forearm, whatever the case may be, depending on your individual differences. Now, you don't want that to happen. Instead, what you want to do is punch through that range of motion. Now the difference here is the axis of rotation is not supposed to be the handle. All right, That's where the problem is. The axis should actually be the center of the bell. So check this out. Here's the difference. In these first two reps, watch how I pull the kettlebell high and then let the handle swivel in my hand. It'll flip over my hand and then crash through the forearm causing pain. Now, on these next reps, watch how I punch through the range of motion, allowing the access to take place near the center of the belly of the bell. Much easier on the forearm, hurts a lot less, you can do a lot more reps. The tips that I've shown you should help you out at fixing your technique. If you need more help with your current pain, Make sure to check out Fixing Elbow Pain and find out how you can finally get back to pain-free training. All the best. Take care.